In the early 1900s, one person inspired by Darwin's theories was Russian scientist Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov, one of the world's foremost experts in the artificial insemination of farm animals. His research was backed by Tsar Nicholas II, who granted funds for Ivanov to discover if such techniques could be used for the breeding of horses or even to create new species unknown to nature. The Tsars liked artificial insemination because it enabled you to do rather crazy things. So Ivanov created the world's first Zorse, zebra-horse hybrid. With the funding of royal patrons, the future looked bright for Ivanov's hybrid dream. But of course, come the communist revolution, all of that goes by the wayside. In 1918, Bolshevik revolutionaries executed Tsar Nicholas II and his family. Ivanov's network of powerful sponsors was no more. But Ivanov is an adaptive kind of guy, and he realizes that there's an element of artificial insemination that could appeal to the new regime. In 1910, at a zoological conference in Austria, Ivanov had speculated that it might be possible to inseminate a female ape with human sperm. But under the Tsar, such experiments would have been blocked by the Orthodox Church. Now in 1924, at the age of 54, Ivanov reached out to Stalin's regime. From the first stages of my scientific research, I tried to arrange experiments in crossing humans and apes. I assumed that the Soviet government could help me in the interests of science and propaganda. The founding fathers of communism, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, had been heavily influenced by the works of Darwin. In fact, the leader of the new Soviet Union, Vladimir Lenin, kept a small statuette of an ape contemplating a human skull on his desk. Darwinism was, was a kind of pretext for Marxism in, in so many ways. In countries that were underpinned by atheism, which the new USSR was, how, how better to reject religion than to be able to prove that Darwin's theories were correct. 